If you are having problems charging your iPhone 13 Pro Max, you need to watch this video. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions, screw-by-screw -screw instructions on exactly how to remove it, how to replace it, and how to get it back together again. Start off, I'm on the hot plate. It's set to 85 degrees C, and whilst it's warming up on there, I'm just going to remove the two pentalobe screws from the bottom of the phone. All iPhones have these, so you will be familiar with it and all little tool sets that you will get will have one of these included with it. Remove those screws and store them safely for later. It's important to note that the screen on this is very fragile, easy to break when removing it and difficult to remove. So the way that I do it, I take a suction cup, I stick it onto the bottom of the phone just like that, and then I'm gonna take one of these very, very fine razor blades. It's called a Dorco blade if you're looking for it online. And you're going to push it into the very bottom of the phone, making sure that it sits completely flat at the bottom. Not on an angle like this. It wants to be completely flat all the way to the bottom of the chassis. Once you've done that, I'm going to add some isopropyl alcohol in a little squeezy tube like that and just let it soak in. Whilst that's soaking in, I'm going to begin lifting up. I'm sort of lifting this way against the phone, sort of prizing it. And then whilst that's doing that, I'm prizing up on my Dorco blade here. You might find that if it's not ready to come up, it will bend and snap the Dorco blade. But if it's ready, it's just going to pop the screen out real nice and easy. It doesn't even have to be super hot when you're doing this. It just, it comes off real nice. So you can see that I've got a small gap there, right? In that small gap now, I'm going to take one of these blue plastic guitar picks from iFixit. And then we're going to make the gap a little bit bigger. You can see that it's opened up some more of the screen there. We can run some isopropyl alcohol along that edge and we're going to run the plastic pick up there, making it nice and easy. Honestly, it's, it, it's easy to remove these once you know how to. We're going to do the same, run back along the edge, and we're going to run along the left-hand edge now. A little bit of isopropyl alcohol in there, and we're just going to carefully run it down, making sure, sure that there's not a lot of resistance. And if you do come across some resistance, you just want to add a little bit more alcohol. Notice that I'm still keeping it warm on my hot plate. You can do the same with a hairdryer or a heat gun, but the hot plate is always the best option. Now that we've got to the top there, I'm just going to lift it up a little bit from the bottom, wiggle it from side to side a bit, and then I'm going to insert the plastic guitar pick just flat. I'm not going in at it from the side. I'm flat, straight down so that I can prise it out and unclip the clips at the top meaning that this phone is now open. It just opens like a book from the left-hand side. Let's go over to the workbench now and remove this charging port. I've left the suction cup on there because that's what I'm using so that it is like a little prop so that the screen doesn't fall over. And before we remove the charging port, we need to get the screen off this phone. The first three screws are held down with a tri-wing screw. So use your tri-wing screwdriver to remove all three of those. I believe all three of these are the same size as well, so don't worry too much about muddling them up. And then the shield comes off, it's stuck to my finger then, so, and yeah, just get the shield out of the way like that. I've just got this little piece of magnetic whiteboard, you can see blades and screws are already stuck to it. And I'm going to remove the screws and lay them out in the same order that they came out. So those three screws go with that shield there, and we're going to carry on doing it like that all the way through this repair. Notice how it's roughly the same sort of shape as a mobile phone. I'll lay them out along here, all the screws for the bottom, so that I know where they go back into the phone. Honestly, do it this way, it's real easy. Back to working on the phone now, we've got some more tri-wing screws just here. There's two on the bottom of this shield, and then the, the top two are cross-head screws, oddly. That's Apple for you, I suppose. So go ahead, remove those, remove the two cross-head screws at the top, and then this shield is a little bit trickier to get out. But if you use some little pointed tweezers like these, then you'll get it out. Be careful of this flex just here. Remove that, store it for later. When disconnecting any FPC connectors, you should use a plastic spudger like this one. Be careful, don't use metal tweezers. I know I sometimes do it in uh, some of my short videos and it's not best practice, but yeah, tutorials and real life, use a plastic spudger to remove all three of these connectors that hold the screen down. The battery was first, then the screen, and then the ALS top sensor just there. Get them out of the way, store it safely for later. Now we're gonna disconnect the cable for the charging port, which is that one there. And then we're gonna remove these two screws 
which are tri-wing screws holding down this other little shield on the left hand side of the board. With those out of the way we can now lift up this shield, store that right by the screws and then disconnect this little flex cable here. We'll pop out the SIM tray as well. I never have a SIM tool to hand so I'll just use tweezers for that. Now because I've started up here I'm going to work my way down here and across like that and that's two tri-wing screws on this very edge here. Remove them two. I'm just going to free this little cable up here. And now we're at the bottom of the phone. We'll start working our way from here all the way over. Starting off, we've got one screw on the left-hand side of the Taptic engine. That's a crosshead screw. And we've got one more in the very bottom left corner. Then we'll go for these two other crosshead screws just here and here. Keep working through with this screw here. I'll take them out in twos and this one here. The worst part is always putting it back together, so I'll run you through that screw by screw as well. But we'll get this other crosshead on the other side of the lightning connector. One in the very bottom right, just here. And then one more up here. To free up the loudspeaker now. So now I'll get these tweezers and I'll lift up this uh, loudspeaker. Just to note, there's a little sticker at the back of it there that we just peel off. And that's going to reveal, you know more screws so now that we've gone from left to right i'm going to come back and go from right to left and start taking out any of the screws that we've now revealed at this point you'll want one of these little standoff screwdrivers starting off with this one in the top right the charge port there's one little tri-wing screw that's hidden right in the edge of the chassis just here get that out of the way another crosshead screw here Another standoff on the right side of the lightning connector. And another one on the tactic engine here. And we can start a bit more disassembly now by removing this connector from the tactic engine and lifting that out of the way. And then there's always this awkward little shield that gets in the way. It's got like a little clip on it over this side, so it's always just a pain to get out. There we go. You see it's got the barometer sensor still stuck to it. We'll just separate that by peeling it off and then store that for later. That will reveal one more of those little tiny tri-wing screws here and a couple more standoff screws here. They're always on these charging ports, there's a screw screwing the lightning connector into the chassis. So go ahead and get your crosshead screwdriver and lift that out now and with those out of the way I'm going to get my tweezers and I'm going to separate this microphone because that's attached to the charging port as well this microphone which is attached to this bit of plastic so I'll get underneath it with the tweezers to separate it and then this piece of plastic should pop out as well it's stuck down a little bit so just be careful it's a good idea at this point to pop a little bit of isopropyl alcohol around the edges of this uh, charging port because they are stuck down quite fast. And we're going to get underneath it with our tweezers. I'm just going to start lifting it up. And pulling it out. So frustratingly, you can see that the charging port is now released and fairly free to wiggle around and stuff but there's still the problem of this big DAP battery that's in the way of it. So next job is to remove that. It's supposed to be relatively easy to get these batteries out. And the idea of it goes that you get hold of these little adhesive tabs at the bottom here and you just sort of begin twisting it around and you start pulling them as sort of lateral to the battery as you possibly can. And there's a chance that this one might come and be good but there's also a chance it'll snap like that. So it's meant to come off quite easily, but as you can see, they do snap very easy as well. Now I'm just gonna try one more time to get underneath it. It helps if you warm it up a bit, but I've found that with these newer models of iPhone, they can be difficult even still if you've warmed it up as well. Alcohol doesn't help much either. It's just sort of try your best to pull it out pretty much. And you'll see, yeah, it snaps. It's a pain. It's difficult. 
Maybe I'll snap my fingers and the battery will be removed. Oh, that wasn't bad. Maybe we'll just cut that so that it's just that bit and it looks like I get it out first time. But yeah, you'll see that this uh, charge port is moving a lot more freely now. And it is almost tempting to just pull it out from under there and not replace the adhesive, but we're professionals. Let's do the same on that other battery tab. Hopefully this one comes out a bit easier. It's a bit more forgiving on me. This one's shorter as well. Notice I'm wiggling it from side to side. That just makes it a bit easier rather than pulling it. That one wasn't as bad, I suppose. And then for the rest of it, there's just like a tiny bit of adhesive up the top, right? You can add a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol around that. And then carefully with a plastic tool from the bottom, just lift it up and you'll notice that it just comes out very, very easily, that top one. You see tiny, tiny bit of adhesive on there. And now that means that we can slide our charging port, look, just underneath like that. And it's out, that's it, it's removed chuck that away or recycle it do whatever you need to do with that now that we've got our new charging port this is a genuine pulled part from another iphone 13 pro max i've just had a panic where i couldn't find the part and then realized that i had to pull it we're going to line it up let's start at the bottom right it's going to seem a bit backwards when we're doing this but just bear with me start off line it up and get your two bottom screws down there and set in place it's going to do you a lot of favours getting that in first because then everything else will line up around that. They're like a fixed point. Right, so now that you've got that bottom lined up like that, we're going to get the flex cable and we're going to tuck it underneath the logic board just here until we can line up the connector with the FPC connector and secure that down. Once that's secured down, we're free to connect this one again. So that goes in here. And that means that everything else that screws in now will line up very nicely. We'll put that wireless charging connector back in as well. Bish bash bosh. Just make sure that this cable here is tucked under this plastic sort of receptacle here. And then this bit here needs to go on like that. And then the rest of this should secure down quite nicely. Starting off, first of all, we had one standoff screw just here. Get that secured down. A little tri-wing screw in this edge just here. Line that up and screw it down. And then there's one more grounding crosshead screw just here. Next, I'm gonna put this uh, piece of plastic in place just there and push the microphone and barometer sensor into it just like that, followed by this standoff screw just here. Now we've got one more standoff screw on the right hand side of the lightning connector. Get that one secured now. And then another standoff screw just here. Let's get the Taptic engine in place now. That sits on top of everything there. And secure it down just there. That annoying little metal shield goes on top of everything there. We can screw that in place here with a crosshead screw. Another little crosshead screw here. Another one just in the very bottom here. And a slightly thicker one just here. With that all screwed down now, we're going to go with the other standoff screw that's left behind for the Taptic engine. Then we can put the loudspeaker in place. I think that the rest of them are just crossheads. I might be wrong. Either side of the lightning connector. And then the last one for the speaker and the Taptic engine. A couple of little grounding screws on this very left hand edge. Before I forget, there is one just there, isn't there? I bet you were going to try and catch me out, weren't you? Leave a comment if you thought that I was going to miss this one. Obviously I'm not. Right, just this last tri-wing just here. So now we can just reinstall the battery. Use a adhesive strip pack like this. Get it lined up on the back. Make sure it's pushed down. Peel off the pink sheet, push down the black tabs. And then when lining up batteries, I always find that it's easiest if you connect the battery first to make sure that it lines up properly. 
and then secure the battery down. Apply some pressure wherever the adhesive was. And now I'm going to spend a minute removing all the leftover adhesive on the back of this uh, on the sh on the chassis. Sorry. So now that that is actually clean this time, we're going to get the new adhesive seal. I apologise if it seems like I'm rushing the ending of this video. I've got a hair cut in three minutes. But yeah, get the seal on there, resecure the screws down, and that is how you replace the charging port on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.